One of the first things that you learn when you start collecting watches, or at least get interested in watches, is the difference between a quartz watch and a mechanical watch. And then, of course, you immediately notice the difference between the seconds hand, that ticking seconds hand of a quartz watch versus the beautiful sweep second hand that you get from a mechanical watch. However, all sweep seconds are not created equal. So today what we're going to do is make a comparison of sweep seconds. We're going to be looking at all different types of movements today. We're gonna to start out with mechanical watches and of course all different beat rates. And then we're gonna be taking a look at some quartz watches that obviously get very, very smooth second hands like spring drive and electrostatic, but there are a few others that we'll mention throughout this video. So let's flip the camera and take a look at some second hands and some sweep action. As I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be looking at a bunch of different movements and really not the movements, we're going to be looking at the seconds hands and comparing their sweep seconds. It doesn't matter if you are a seasoned collector or just starting out, Understanding the nuance between different watches can be difficult. Case and dial construction, how the hands are made, case and movement finishing, there is always more to learn. Today, we're going to look at sweep seconds and the different speeds at which they move. Quartz watches, as we all know, beat at one tick per second. There are actually mechanical watches that do the same, but these are actually quite complicated and of course, for discussion in a later video. They're also very, very expensive. I'm going to start with some of the most commonly used movements and commonly used speeds of those movements. There are slower movements out there, but for the purpose of this video, we're gonna start with the standards and we're gonna start with a three hertz frequency movement or one that runs at 21,600 vibrations per hour. In this category, we're talking about some of the enthusiast movements, some of the enthusiast favorites, and somewhat affordable movements like the Seiko NH35, and of course the Powermatic 80. Powermatic 80 is actually based on a faster movement, however, it slowed down to get an 80 hour of power reserve. Both of the movements that I just mentioned are running at 21,600 VPH and three hertz. These have a beat rate of about six beats per second. All that means is that it's actually ticking, but you really can't see it because it's moving in one second six times. So obviously it does smooth out and that's why you get a sweep seconds with an NH35. The next category here, and again, we are talking about some other very true enthusiast favorites, really workhorse movements that can be found in watches costing $200, up to tens of thousands of dollars. Of course, we're talking about the ETA 2824, the ETA 2892 and their siblings, and of course, Selena movements like the SW200 and 300, also the Miona 9000 series. All of these movements run at 28800 vibrations per hour. Now there are a ton of other movements that run at this speed. However, we're going to just talk about these and I'm gonna obviously show some of these on screen as well. These run at four hertz. That means you're getting eight beats per second. So again, in one second, that second hand is actually moving eight times. So there are eight very quick ticks within a second. So you're getting an even smoother second hand on watches that are fitted with movements like these ETA movements. Again, there are tons of other movements out there that use this same speed. However, these are enthusiast movements. These are sort of the standard of the industry, a good, solid, everyday movement. And these, again, get eight ticks per second. So a very nice, smooth second hand on these movements. Now we're moving into a higher end category, higher end movements. We're going to be talking about high beat mechanical movements here. Watches that usually feature a high beat are usually more expensive and more rare than the standard four hertz movements. Watch brands like Seiko with the 8L55, Grand Seiko with the 9S, Longines with the Ultracron, and of course the El Primero, all have frequencies of five hertz with a vibrations per hour of 36,000. And this gets a very smooth 10 beats per second. So that's the important part here. Those 10 beats per second make this a very smooth second hand. Now you can imagine from here, prices of watches 
that have a faster movement than a high beat movement go up exponentially. The ones that I just mentioned aren't cheap, so you're talking about five to $10,000 in that range. But as we move forward, I'm gonna give you two examples of very expensive watches that have even higher beat rates than a high beat watch. So the next two watches, take it to another level. These are just examples of what you can call extreme high beat watches. There are not many of these out there. They are a very rare category. One of my favorites and first on this list of two watches is the 8 Hertz Chopard LUC. This is a beautiful watch that gets 16 beats per second. So an extremely smooth second hand, 57,600 VPH. So this is extremely fast as well. I actually don't have video of this. However, I do have a photo of one of the watches. So uh, obviously the second hand on this is very, very smooth. We will not dwell on this. And next on this list is another one of my favorite. It is the El Primero. So it's the El Primero 21 caliber with a 1 100th of a second chronograph. It has two escapements. So this is a high beat El Primero movement beating independently at 36,000 VPH. So that is a high beat movement, a traditional high beat movement. That's the timekeeping part, but you also get an incredible 360,000 VPH for the chronograph. So this is a bonkers chronograph on this watch. If you've ever seen one in person, it is insane. They actually hum. These watches actually hum when the chronograph is engaged. Really crazy watches, really fun to look at as well because the chronograph hand just flies around the dial. Um, and I have video of these watches, insane, awesome watches. So now you're asking yourself, where do we go from here? Next, we're actually gonna dive into the quartz realm or technology of quartz sweep second hands. And we're actually going to start with the most inexpensive movement on this list, and that is the Mecha Quartz movement. Mecha Quartz are a combination of quartz and of course a mechanical movement. These are powered by batteries. These are usually a chronograph form. However, you can find these in a time only form as well. It's just basically a chronograph, not using the chronograph functions, and you have a sweep second for a time only watch. I've seen this done, a lot of brands do it, and essentially what you get from this is four beats per second. So it's not an incredibly smooth second hand, however, it is a sweep second hand. These actually do look good. You can see a little bit of a tick because you're only getting four ticks or four beats per second, but it does work and it does look like a sweep second. Next on the list is probably the best bargain on this list, a better bargain than of course Mecha Quartz, and that is because I am talking about the Precisionist movement from Bulova. Available in chronograph form and time only form, this movement uses a few tricks to overcome the typical Quartz movement's weak points. First, it's extremely unique Quartz crystal. Most Quartz watches use a crystal shaped into a two-prong tuning fork. However, what Bulova did with the Precisionist is use a three-pronged fork that the company claims can oscillate at an extremely high 262 kilohertz. So that means you are getting 16 beats per second. That is as high as that Chopard that I mentioned before. And obviously this is nowhere near as expensive as that watch. With an accuracy of five seconds per month and an increased resistance to temperature changes and an insanely smooth sweep second hand, the Precisionist is a bargain. Typically watches featuring the Precisionist are affordable, a great example of this is the new Bulova Jetstar, which I just recently reviewed here on my channel. It comes in just under $600. Uh, they make a limited edition that's around $700. It's insane considering a high beat watch from brands like Seiko and Grand Seiko and Longines, they cost about $5,000 and their second hand is not as smooth as the Jetstar. So the Precisionist, 
a bargain movement if you are looking for an extremely smooth sweep second. The last two movements on this list that I will mention are from two amazing brands. These movements are innovative and unlike anything you can buy anywhere else from any other brand. So essentially the two movements we're about to mention are exclusive to the two brands we will mention here as well. First is the incredible and world's first the electrostatic movement from Accutron. Powered by twin turbines that rotate as you move your wrist, similar to an automatic movement, however, the turbines move at an incredible speed between two electrodes which are affixed to the movement. The energy is stored in an accumulator which powers two motors, the electrostatic motor fueling the fluid second hand and a step motor powering the hour and minute hands. This revolutionary watch offers a completely smooth second hand which is incredible to look at. It is mesmerizing. It is really a truly smooth second hand. These are great movements because there is so much action on the dial side, those turbines spinning, and then of course that ultra smooth like butter second hand, it never gets old. Also something to note, these start at around $3,500. So Accutron's featuring an electrostatic movement started around $3,500, which is actually not terrible when you think about it. It's actually a very good price. There truly is nothing like it on the market from any other manufacturer, including Seiko and of course the spring drive movement. But let's talk about the spring drive movement. There is another movement out there and it's from another major Japanese manufacturer. It is unlike anything else on the market. Of, of course, I'm speaking about one of the most innovative movements of our time, the spring drive. Very different from Accutron's electrostatic movement, spring drive's glide wheel is basically an electromagnetic generator with a quartz controlled braking system, while the Accutron uses an electrostatic motor. Spring drive is driven by a mainspring, just like all other mechanical watches and does not require a battery. While the electrostatic Accutron is driven by an electrical energy produced by the electrostatic generators and that is stored in a capacitor, so essentially a rechargeable battery. Spring drive is almost a true marriage of mechanical and quartz movements. The result is a perfectly smooth second hand. The first spring drive was featured in a Seiko. It was actually an integrated bracelet Seiko that are now very collectible. However, a majority of spring drive movements are now featured in Grand Seikos in the 9R form. So the 9R tells you that that is a spring drive movement that is in a Grand Seiko. Not only are they reliable, accurate movements, but they are also not bad to look at either. Well, there you go. Lots of beautiful sweep seconds that we took a look at today. Spring drive and electrostatic obviously are almost completely smooth second hands. They are really innovative and beautiful movements. Their movements are really interesting. Uh, obviously the electrostatic are more of a skeletonized dial side movement, while of course spring drives are almost like a traditional automatic movement. They get hand decorated, really good looking movements. And obviously you could see those through a sapphire crystal on the case back. If you get a Grand Seiko that actually features that sometimes they hide them which is an absolute shame you can get a spring drive in a regular Seiko in a run-of-the-mill Seiko uh, however that is a 5R movement I believe they call it a 5R movement uh, and that basically means it's just a toned down version of a 9R uh, they will not put a fully decorated version in a non grand Seiko. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. I know there are a few other movements that I could have mentioned in this video, but I wanted to make this as short as possible. And I already knew this would be a very long video because I wanted to go through a lot of movements and a lot of watches. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think of this video? What do you think of the second hands that we looked at today? I think that Jetstar is an incredible value. It's really the precisionist that's an incredible value for the money because you are getting 16 beats per second. When you consider the prices of all the other watches that I've mentioned on this list, that is excellent considering how smooth the second hand is. Tell me what you think down in the comments below. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. It's super helpful for the channel and I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.